But it, look, let's go to the other side of Cameron Smith now. For all his success and everything he has achieved in the game, he isn't overly popular with fans. Lara, you're looking at me like you want to answer this question. Because they don't like a winner. And New South Wales people don't it's like a winner. That, Lara, no, I disagree. Well, there's a perc- OK, you, you guys are going to go all. on your way on this. I think from a football perspective, when he plays... But it's not a football perspective played, question. It is, because it's about him no, as a football not. player. That's not, if people don't like him, they've got reasons they don't like him. It's well, not necessarily because they don't like him as a football player. Well, I think that I'm answering it from the perspective of what he put on the field. Yes. And I think that people and fans didn't like him necessarily because he managed the game. Often he was another referee, the way he held himself um, You hit the nail on the head there, there Lara. With, right. with his, that could with be his... the way he played football. Well, let's talk yeah, about his yeah, relationship with referees. It. Let's yep. talk about his relationship with referees. There's been a, a long-time theory that Cameron was essentially a koala bear with the match officials. And the more experience that he got, the more that he led Melbourne, the more that he led Queensland and Australia, the more influence he seemed to be able to have at critical moments in in big games where he'd slow things down, he'd want to engage in dialogue, he'd invariably he'd con he, the referees. He, he had too. a he had a knack of being <laughs> he had he a did. knack of being able to get away with a fair bit. But you want that in your team if you're coaching. Oh, got, yeah, 100%. yeah, that, that's, 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 that's the guy and, you want. And if they're not my team, I don't like it. Yeah, yeah. And so that's... to your question about why does he polarise people, I think you know, let's go back to 2019, and you know we. All had very differing views on the Bailey Simonson yep. incident. There was a match, a final, which was a grand final qualifier down at Amy Park. Jared Croker had an injured knee. Cameron comes in and bumps him uh, off the ball after Cooper Cronk had scored a try. It was a cheap shot. So that were the three things for me that stand out that rub people the wrong way. Was clearly the salary cap scandal that engulfed which the storm. Still we didn't even mention that. He's never... The, I think the biggest thing that sticks in people's core about the, that, the, Ben, the, the, he's never addressed yeah, it. The Alex McKinnon issue polarised the game yeah. and then the wrestle, for many, who I've said on this show, I'm ambivalent towards the wrestle, but most people hate it and Melbourne have been the champions at it and Cameron Smith is their captain and the best at that defensive technique in rugby league. Look, for all the greatness of Cameron, one of the things that we haven't mentioned is... Statistically, he's one of the top half dozen tacklers in the competition. Has been for years. Uh, uh, when they talk about effective tackle making, that's because he wrestles so well. And a lot of people don't like that. He's a polarising figure in that respect. He's a polarising figure for a whole lot of reasons. The referees, from a football point of view, the cheap shots that, that he's got this ability to, to uh, drop an elbow on a bloke or drop a knee into a bloke or a rubber bloke the wrong... He's, he does all that and he does it like it's an accident, gets up, innocent me, butter doesn't melt in my mouth. Uh, the, you got the, you got the cronk fallout, he's never addressed that. You've got the... Well, he addressed the, it in his book. Well, well he didn't. It, it got it, about it three really paragraphs. And let's, let, let, let's be honest, this whole retirement saga... No, no He's way. waited no. for the day before the competition starts when we all should be talking about tomorrow night's game well, and the, the opening round. Here's the other thing. And now we're talking about Cameron. That, that's what I can't yeah. reconcile is that for someone... He could have so, said it a month so, ago and he would have his day in the sun for days. Someone so deliberate on a footy field, this whole retirement thing has seemingly been so clunky. I, yeah. Do you yeah. really think so? I, I do. Or was it about him? No, I just... I think he... I think he thought that he'd be right to play and he'd probably drag a contract and the... Less he trained and the further Jagger he got a contract. They had three clubs begging him. No, no. He, he would have had an opportunity to play somewhere, so he left it and he left it and he left it. And the longer he stayed away from training, away from a club, he became less certain about whether or not he actually wanted well, to play. We just, just sat here about and talked about how he's the greatest player of all. That's not how you expect the greatest player of all to retire today. It felt empty. His family wasn't there. The players were in there. He's not going to be at the game tomorrow night. Yeah, it doesn't... It didn't feel like the appropriate way to step away from the game. This is part of the enigma, Lara, of Cameron. Do we really know the real Cameron? After 20 years Mm -hmm. of playing over 400 games, fronting up to X amount of press conferences, do, do you think that you really know who the real Cameron Smith is? Which is probably the way he wants it. (laughs) <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I think I think he was always regarded for the first three quarters of his career as a fairly genuine bloke. I think it's only been and the last I, couple of years that, that yeah, it's but changed. Yeah, but all, all, all the all the curtains been pulled back.